Namaste. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, filming this uh, routine in the botanical gardens. Come into a comfortable seat. Just cross your legs however feels comfortable for you at this point, starting your practice. Sit upright. Keep your index fingers and your thumbs together with your palms facing up into a Gyana Mudra, a mudra for higher consciousness. Just take a few moments to just center yourself into your breath. Center yourself into this moment. So we can fill up the prana account, the life force account. And as we fill up this Life Force account, we're going to be working on Half Lotus and moving towards Full Lotus. There's no pressure. You don't have to do anything that doesn't feel right on your body. Just want you to keep in mind that the Lotus flower grows and comes out of the mud. But it comes out beautifully clean and radiant. The lotus flower really represents that whatever adversity we have in our life, we can come out of it. If we just stay connected to our breath, stay connected to the moment, and we believe in ourselves, we will come out of it bright and shining and beautiful. Keep your palms together, bow down into the highest place within you. Trust yourself as you're moving and as you're flowing. And feel free to set an intention, maybe on this theme of the lotus flower. Inhale, sweep your arms to the side and up, gaze to your thumbs. And then exhale, draw your hands to your heart. And then bend forward, come into a tabletop position. Keep your arms shoulder distance apart and your legs hip distance apart. Point your feet. Curl your toes under, arch your spine to a cow. Move your head a little bit side to side. Soften the tops of your shoulders. And then draw your hips back, move the arms forward a little bit, like you're doing a child's pose, downward dog sort of position, while the toes are curled under. Feeling a good stretch of the toes and the feet. And then exhale, round it into a cat stretch. Inhale, arch it to a cow again. Exhale, lower the chest and the chin to the floor. Inhale, push it up and draw your hips back into a child's pose. Exhale, round it into a cat. Inhale, arch it to a cow. Exhale, chest and chin to the floor. Inhale, push back up and draw your hips back into a child's pose. Exhale to a cat. Inhale, arch to a cow. Exhale, chest and chin to the floor. Inhale to a baby cobra or upward facing dog. Roll the shoulders back. Lengthen the spine. Exhale to a downward facing dog. Shake out your head, spread your fingers, spread your toes, try to lift your toes up off the floor. Feel the hollowing in through the lower belly, a strong Uddiyata Bandha. Feel the lifting through the pelvic floor. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, lower the knees. Come back into a tabletop position. Now we'll start with some hip circles. 
So I'd like to say that you're making a circle, but you're not quite making a circle. You're making a little bit more a, a P. P for peace. <laughs> so you exhale half the circle and you inhale the rest of the circle. Good, and then we're going to go in the opposite direction. Now we have a little bit more of a circle, but it's still a little bit more like an, a, a bigger P. All right, but feel that you're moving your leg through your hip socket. So warming up the hips, curling the right toes under, and then lift into a three-legged down dog. Open your hips so you're stacking your hips. Bend the left leg and extend it. Bend the left leg and extend while you're pressing the right heel into the floor. Bend and extend. Hold it and then circle the foot around the ankle three times in each direction. Keep breathing. Good, and then slowly level off your hips and lower the left knee and shin to the floor. And we're going to circle the right hip, opening out to the side, extending the leg, drawing the knee towards the navel, open it out to the side, extend, and draw it in. Good, three times in each direction. And now go in the opposite direction. Draw the knee towards the armpit and circle it around. Curl the left toes under and come into a three-legged down dog. Open up your hips again, stack them on top of each other, bend the right leg and extend. Inhale, bend, exhale, extend. Inhale and exhale. Keep the leg extended, circle around the ankle three times and then reverse three times. Good. Level off your hips. Lower the right knee to the floor. Lower the left knee to the floor. Come back into tabletop position. Round it into cat stretch. Exhale. Inhale, sit back to a child's pose, but curl your toes under. Exhale to cat. Inhale, arch to cow. Exhale, chest chin to the floor. Inhale to baby cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale it into downward facing dog. Beautiful. Shake it loose a little bit, flutter your lips. Give yourself a sigh if you want to. And then walk your hands back to your feet. Your feet are hip distance apart. And just sway a little bit side to side. Keep your knees bent. And as you're swaying to one side, one leg can extend, the other leg can be bent. And just find a little freedom here in your torso, feeling fully supported through your legs, fully supported through your abs. Just let go of any tension that you might feel or in your hamstrings, or in your IT band, in the side there of your leg, or the outer upper hips. And then roll yourself up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Inhale, sweep the arms to the side up, gaze up to your thumbs. Exhale, namaste. Good, just take a moment to notice how you feel, having done that little routine and then you're going to step to the front of your mat and that's where we're going to continue into our moon salutations now bend your knees and jump your feet together palms are still together in front of your heart moon salutation number two inhale lift up and arch back exhale forward fold Inhale, step the right foot back into Anjana Asana. Keep the right toes curled under. Exhale, step the right foot forward into a forward fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, lift the heels, separate the knees. Malasana, squeeze the inner thighs against your waist as you stretch your arms forward. Exhale again into Uttanasana. Inhale, step the left foot back. Anjana Asana. Exhale into downward facing dog. Into plank pose. 
Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale to baby cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale it to downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward into a low lunge. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, balancing chair, Prapadasana one. Extend the arms up, Prapadasana two. Inhale, straighten out the legs, heels off. Exhale, namaste. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, mala, Malasana. Separate the knees, but squeeze the thighs against your waist. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Into plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, baby cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward into a low lunge. Roll the shoulders back. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, Prapadasana one. Exhale, Prapadasana two. Inhale, straighten up the legs. Exhale, namaste again. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, Malasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Into plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. In, baby cobra, upper dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, low lunge. Exhale, left foot forward, squat. Inhale, Prapadasana, balancing chair. Squeeze the inner thighs, inner heels together. Exhale, straighten up the arms. Inhale, straighten out the legs. Exhale, namaste. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, left foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, lift heels, separate the knees, squeeze against your waist, Malasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, baby cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, low lunge. Exhale, right foot forward, squat. Inhale, balancing chair, Prapadasana one, palms together. Exhale, Prapadasana two. Inhale, straighten up the legs. Exhale, namaste. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, Malasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, left foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, up dog, baby cobra. Exhale, down dog. In, right foot forward. Exhale, left foot. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale, exhale. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale. Inhale, left foot back. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, Malasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right foot back, Anjana. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, three-legged down dog. Exhale, step the left foot forward. Inhale, crescent lunge. Stay in the crescent lunge, open the arms to the side and cross the right elbow on top of the left for the eagle arms. Right, draw up through the pelvic floor, draw up through the navel, lift through the heart, drop your shoulders down as you squeeze into the center line of your body. Breathe in fully, exhale completely, seeing that your hips are squared off to the front and your hips are leveled. And gradually from here, open it up into a warrior two. Keep your left knee lined over your ankle, leveling off your hips and keeping your pelvis in a neutral position. Stay very strong in your lower belly, lifted in your heart and open in your lungs. Soft gaze over the right fingertips. And then a soft gaze over the left fingertips. And then feel that your toes are lifted so that you can really root down into your feet. Inhale, lift and straighten the left leg. Exhale, go into a triangle pose. So as you keep your toes lifted, you can root down into your feet and then draw up through your legs. Draw up through the abs and then draw up through the heart. Roll the navel and the heart up towards the sky. And as an option, you can reach the right arm over the right ear. You can gaze up to the side or down, wherever your neck feels good, wherever your breath feels the deepest. Bend your left knee, line it over the ankle, keeping the right arm over the right ear. Use a block underneath your left hand if you need to for extended side angle. Parshu Konasana. You can bind it here, work the right arm behind your back, left arm under the hamstring. So the left side waist is flushed to your left inner thigh. Holding on to the right wrist with your left hands, rolling your shoulders open. Feel free to straighten out your left leg. And in this position, if my neck feels tight, I like to sometimes just drop my head, move my head a little bit side to side, that gives me a good release. Really draw up actively through the left quadriceps so that you can release through the hamstring. Bend the left knee, release out of it back into that extended side angle, back into the triangle pose, rewinding yourself all the way up, extending the arms, and then exhaling it into a warrior two. Ideally, the way we come, go into the poses, we move out of them. Step back into a plank pose, or three-legged down dog. And then exhale, and inhale, making big circles with your entire, with your leg extended, moving from your hip. If you find this too challenging, five circles in each direction. Feel free to do the one that we did in the beginning of this practice with your knee bent on your knees. Inhale, 
Inhale and exhale. This is a challenging one, so keep the right heel as high off the ground as you feel. You need to create space for those hip circles. Step the left foot forward into a low lunge. Step the right foot forward. Inhale, halfway close. Exhale and fold. In, rise, gaze to your thumbs. Exhale, namaste. Inhale, rise. Exhale, and fold. Inhale, left foot back, Anjanasana. Exhale, go into a three-legged down dog. Draw the knee to the navel, step forward to a low lunge, and inhale it to a crescent lunge. Open the arms to the side and cross the left elbow on top of the right for the eagle arms. See that your right knee is lined over the ankles, your hips are leveled and squared off. Squeeze towards the center line of your body. Lift with the heart. Try to let your tops of your shoulders soften. Soften your face, soften your jaw. And then exhale, open it up into a warrior two. Soft gaze over the right fingertips. And a soft gaze over the left fingertips. Now, so on this side, try to keep your toes lifted, feeling that you're drawing the energy up through your feet, through your legs, up through your pelvic floor, up through your lower belly, up to your heart, up into your lungs. Inhale, straighten up the arms and straighten out the right leg. Exhale into a triangle pose. Slide your right arm down along your shin. Lower the fingertips to the floor if you want to. And then feel free to reach the left arm over the left ear, which is going to intensify the stretch into the left side ribs there. Look up, look to the side, or look down. Bend your right knee, line it over the ankle for extended side angle, Parshukanasana. And if you did a bind on the other side, see if you can do that on this side or remain in the previous position. Roll yourself open. Try to pin the shoulder blades towards each other. And straighten out the right leg if you feel that the hamstring there is okay with it. And then test out just dropping your head on this side, moving it a little bit side to side. Finding a position where you can breathe your deepest breath where you can release any tensions, any tightnesses, blockages in your neck or in your shoulders. Then bend the right knee, come back into extended side angle. Straighten out the leg for triangle pose. Inhale, lift and straighten up the arms. Exhale to warrior two. Inhale to low lunge. Exhale, three-legged down dog. Full inhale and exhale. Make big hip circles. So the leg is straight. Left heel can be off the floor as high as is needed to create that space in the hips. But you're moving your leg in the hip socket. So you don't want your hips to move too much. They have to keep using your abdominals to stabilize the hips. And then go in the opposite direction five times. Lubricates the hip joints, opens them up, warms them up, prepares them for lotus, strengthens the hip as well, and the buttocks. Step the right foot forward. Step the left foot forward. Inhale halfway. Exhale fold. In rise. Exhale namaste. All right, so let's uh, move on. Inhaling, lifting up, arching back. Exhaling, folding over your thighs. Inhaling, stepping the right foot back to Anjana Asana again, getting pretty used to doing this. Exhale, the hands to the floor. 
Inhale to three-legged down dog. Exhale, left foot forward to low lunge and inhale it up into a crescent lunge. And I'm going to find the eagle arms again, crossing the right elbow on top of the left. We're going to lengthen the spine and lift up and only arch as far back as we can inhale. And then exhale, open to a warrior two. So pivot that right heel in. And exhale into a moon squat. Just lower down as far as your knees, ankles allow you to. And then come back to a warrior two. So inhale, lift up, arch back into the crescent eagle. Exhale to a warrior two. Inhale to a moon squat. And exhale, stay low as you shift to the left and back to the center for warrior two. Again, pivot that right heel off and inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, open to warrior two. Inhale to moon squat. And exhale it to warrior two. Be very mindful of your ankles, of your knee, and your hip here. Inhale it again, lift up, arch back. Exhale, hinge it forward, and lower to three-legged down dog. Draw the knee to the navel, slide the left leg forward into a pigeon pose, and then inhale back to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to the navel, slide it forward into a pigeon pose, so draw that left knee towards your left thumb, open up the angle however far you want it to be, inhale back to three-legged dog. Exhale, slide it into pigeon, lift your chest, roll your shoulders open. Inhale it back to three-legged down dog. Exhale, step the left foot forward to low lunge. Right foot forward to meet. Inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. In, rise, gaze up to your thumbs. Exhale, namaste. Repeat this on the other side. Inhale, arch back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left foot back, Anjana Asana. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, three-legged down dog. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, up to crescent lunge. Cross your left elbow on top of the right. And then inhale, lift up, arch back. Draw in so you find your balance. Exhale, open to a warrior two. Inhale to a moon squat. Just go down as far as your knees, ankles, hips allow you to go. Exhale, shift your weight, come back to a warrior two. Inhale, pivot the heel off, lift up, arch back. And exhale, open it up into a warrior two. Inhale to moon squat. Exhale to warrior two. It's very important that you stay low initially to get back up into that warrior two. Inhale, lift up, arch back. Exhale, open to warrior two so that the upper body just goes with the flow. Inhale to moon squat. Exhale to warrior two, beautiful. Inhale to the eagle arms. Oops, I forgot that. <laughs> Three-legged down dog, you could do it. Exhale, slide that right knee to the thumb for pigeon pose, keep your chest lifted. Inhale it back to three-legged dog. Exhale, slide it forward. Inhale and lift. Exhale forward very lightly. Inhale back, just gradually opening up the hips here. Exhale, step forward. Left foot forward, inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. In, rise. 
and exhale. Namaste. I hope this feels good so far. And now we're going to start to move into a half lotus position. So balance into your left leg, drawing your right knee towards your chest. Lift your chest, roll your shoulders back. And you're going to take a hold of your right ankle uh, with your right hand and then take a hold of the right foot with your left hand. And then make sure now that you feel that you're, although you're bending your right leg and you're bending the knee, you're moving from your right hip. All right, so the left heel starts moving up towards the left hip as you allow the right knee to drop down. Stay very strong in your core, so you're giving your hip flexor some support here. And then try to maintain the lift and the extension in your body. You can reach the right arm up to the sky, and, or you can try to bind with your left big toe. You can also keep your right hand into a half namaste. And if you find that this half lotus does not work for you, you can do the tree pose as I showed a little bit earlier. Just very gradually work your way into this position. It will open up the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Don't crank it into any positions at all. Okay, now slowly to come out of it, feel that you're moving from your hip and not jerking into the knee. Then draw the knee to the chest, lift up tall, and step the right foot back into a crescent lunge. Really press back into that right heel. Contract the right quads you're drawing up through the kneecap, giving that knee a little bit of a counter pose. Hips are leveled and twist it to your left. Press your palms against each other, roll the shoulders open. You can take this a little bit further by working your right shoulder to the outside of the knee, grounding your right palm to the floor, and reaching the left arm up or over your left ear. And if you feel you can take it even further, then you can try to go into a bind. But all the while, as you're inhaling, feel that you're creating length in your spine. And as you're exhaling, you're creating rotation in your spine. Stay in a position where you can breathe. And slowly rewind yourself. Come back up into a crescent lunge. Ah, really lengthen. Lower the hands to the floor and step the right foot forward. Inhale halfway. Exhale and fold. Ah. Inhale, rise and exhale namaste so let's try this on the other side transferring your weight into your right foot and now drawing the left knee towards your chest and then keep lifting up tall and then you take a hold of your right left foot with your right hand and you can hold on to your left thigh with your left hand. Now it's important that you try to draw the knee towards the front so the left knee is an extension of the hip so it's basically right below your hip maybe right in front of the hip. As you keep drawing your left heel towards your right hip bone. Yeah so I'm massaging my outer upper left hip a little bit. So you can reach the left arm up hang out there you can hold a half namaste, or you can try to work your way towards binding. But all the while trying to maintain extension, so your head is over your shoulders and your shoulders over your pelvis, your pelvis is over, is over your heel. Breathe in and breathe out. Don't pull on your knees, just feel that it's moving from your hip. And slowly start to come out of it, drawing the knee into the chest, and then step it back into a crescent lunge again. Press back into the left heel, draw up to the left quad, so you're giving that knee a little counter position, counter stretch, and twist it now to the right as you exhale. And it continues to open up the left hip flexor. Roll the shoulders open. Take it further if you feel that you can. Ground the palm to the floor. Reach the right arm up or over the right ear. 
or go ahead and bind. All the while, keep breathing, feeling that your bandhas are supporting you, drawing up through the pelvic floor, drawing in and up through the lower belly. Just keep lifting, inhale, lengthening your spine, and exhaling, finding rotation. Rewinding yourself back into a crescent lunge as you inhale. Exhale, lower the hands to the floor, step the left foot forward, inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, gaze it up to your thumbs. And exhale to Namaste. Well, after that, your hips should feel nice and open and quite juicy, ready for a rotated triangle. So step the right foot back about three to three and a half feet. Your right foot is turned in about 45 degrees. Hips and shoulders are squared off to the front. Reach the right arm to the ceiling or the sky as you inhale. And then exhale, hinge it forward. You can be on your right fingertips on the big toe side or the little toe side, or your palm can ground onto a block. And as you inhale, feel length through your spine. And as you exhale, gently twist from the bottom of the ribs, opening up your heart towards the left and reaching your heart upwards. Full inhale, complete exhale. Keep your back leg very active and try to maintain levelness through your hips. Slowly look down. Bring your hands to either each side of your left foot and fold over your left thigh. Try to keep your breastbone lifted and your shoulders roll back as you fold. Shake out your head. Just try to release any tension you don't need. Lift your chest, inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, bend the left knee and step the right foot forward. And we'll repeat this on the other side. Step the left foot back, three to three and a half feet turning the left toes, the left foot in about 45 degrees, hips and shoulders are squared off to the front, inhale the left arm up, and exhale, hinge it forward, ground the palm to a block, stay on your fingertips, be on the inside or the outside of the foot, inhale, length into your spine, and then exhale, rotation into the spine, twisting from the bottom of your ribs. And then gradually release out of it, hands to each side of the right foot, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold over your right thigh. And shake out your head, flutter your lips, do a little sigh, whatever feels releasing. In inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, bend the left knee, palms together, step your feet together, back into Namaste. Good, open up into an intense leg stretch, Prasarita Paratunasana, about three to three and a half feet. Feet are parallel, exhale, hinge it forward. You can also keep your toes turned in, so you're a little pigeon toed. So you give an extra stretch there to the outer part of your lower leg. Keeping the breastbone lifted and rolling the shoulders back try to soften the tops of your shoulders. Your quadriceps are pretty active here too. Maybe lift your toes up off the floor. So you get a deep stretch into the calves, into the hamstrings. All right, now slowly start to turn 180 degrees around into a cow's face pose. So the right knee is on top of the left, and you draw your heels as close into the outer upper buttocks as you can. Inhale the arms up, and then exhale, bend your left elbow, press your head against the left arm, and work the right arm down and behind your back and see if you can join hands. 
Maybe it's too much to include the arms and you don't have to do it. Do whatever you feel that you can, wherever your breath is the deepest. And if you feel that it's available to you, exhale and hinge it forward. Super deep stretch for the hips as well as for the shoulders and the spine. And gradually start to come up out of it, releasing your arms. And then turn to your left and come back into the intense leg stretch, Prasarita Parutanasana. And now we're going to repeat this on the other side. Lift your heels, go to the left, and turn 180 degrees so that your left knee now is on top of the right knee. Adjust, level off your sitting bones. Draw your heels as close towards the outer upper hips. Inhale the arms up. And then exhale, bend your right elbow. Work the left arm behind you and see if you can take a hold of your hands, your fingers. You can use a strap as leverage and exhale, hinge it forward. If you feel that that is releasing to you, don't just do it for the sake of doing it. Just do it if it feels that it serves you in this moment. Slowly start to come up out of it and release the arms. Turn to the right and then gradually come back into intense leg stretch. Good. Now from here I'm going to go into a headstand. Feel free to do a tripod headstand if you wish. It's a little different moving into it from this position, but I've done uh, a headstand flow, and you can also practice that if you want to. I've also done the headstand tutorial, which you could check out. Um, it was a little weird doing it outside on the grass, and there's a little uh, bit of a hill right there, so I had a little trouble <laughs> getting up into it. Uh, but that was this day. And uh, sometimes balance is a little challenging on some days, other days it's, it's no big deal. But the key is just within, you know, your challenges, within your adversities, um, just breathe, just trust the moment and just do the best that you can do. Even if your feet are on the ground and you're in the intense leg stretch, you're getting the benefits of an inversion. So hang out there. Place yourself against the wall if you feel that that is going to support you in a better way. It's a practice. Good, and then slowly come back down. I didn't want to redo that. This is just real life yoga. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and let us just be very serious about taking ourselves lightly right? It makes life so much easier to live because God only knows that life can be very challenging. Now slowly you come up out of it and face to the front into a low lunge, into that Anjana Asana where we've been so many times before. Now the hips are really nice and juicy and open and we're going to stretch them a little further. So allow your hips to move forward, allow your chest to lift and feel that you're lifting your rib cage up out of your hips. You can hang out there or you can try to draw your left heel towards the buttocks getting really deep into the quadricep. And I'm taking it a step further where I'm going into a bind. My left elbow is on the inside of my left foot and my right arm is reaching up and I'm joining my hands. Sort of like that um, cow's face pose position. It's a lot of balance in this, so it's important that you keep hugging in as you're rooting down and reaching up. And slowly start to come out of it, go into a downward facing dog. And then step the left foot forward into the Anjana Asana, and let's repeat this on the other side. Draw your hips forward, 
A lot of internal support is needed here, so the bandhas need to be actively involved. So you're not just sinking into it like a hammock, but you're finding some buoyancy, where you find a, a balance between your strength and your flexibility. Just find a place where you can breathe, where there's no compression in your spine. Everything feels, feels good. Comfortably uncomfortable, maybe yes but never painful. So if you want to, draw your right heel towards the buttocks and take it as far as you can. Just keep breathing, keep believing. Keep moving through the stuff, whatever stuff might be coming up. And then slowly release out of it, come into the downward facing dog. And just remind yourself that you are a lotus beautiful, radiant, shining your light out into the world. Plank pose, inhale, exhale, curl your toes under and draw your hips back into a child's pose like we did in the beginning of this practice. Exhale to cat, inhale, arch to cow, exhale, chest, chin to the floor, inhale to upward facing dog. And then exhale it to downward facing dog. Good. Step the right foot forward and the left foot is going to cross behind. Sit down onto the floor. Sit down onto the grass like I am. Yeah, I have a little bit of grass on my clothes, but that's okay. So beautiful here. Just really enjoy this practice in this scenery. Now we're going to do a seated uh, half-bound lotus. So pelvis is leveled onto the floor and now you draw your left heel towards, so your right heel towards your left hip and the right knee is now an extension of your right hip. Just like you did uh, standing but now you're doing it seated. And, and see what happens when you try to bind your right hand with your right foot. And then feel free to exhale and descend forward. If it's too much, then just keep your, the right sole of your foot to your left inner thigh and do Janus Sushrasana, head to knee pose. Don't force your legs into a lotus position. So lift up and then gradually come out of it. And let's repeat this on the other side. So as beneficial as the half lotuses are, um, if you go too quickly and you force yourself beyond what you feel that you can do, uh, you can easily get injured. And we're not here to injure ourselves, we're just here to open ourselves. And sit up or try to bind or exhale and hinge it forward. I love these half lotus positions and especially if you work a lot with ankle to knee or pigeon pose, uh, working with half lotuses will take your hips sort of to the next level. It works very deeply into them and they're very opening for our joints. I feel like it's dental flossing for the ankle joint, knee joint, and hip joint. Slowly come up out of it and extend your left leg out. Be mindful as you move out of it. Now let's try the full lotus. So first you work the right leg into a half lotus. Draw your right knee towards the center so the right knee is an extension of your right hip. Draw the right heel as close up to the left hip as you can. Then bend your left leg in a little bit and shift your weight forward so that the right knee is grounded onto the floor. And as you're ready to work the left leg on top of the right leg, lean forward and let the right leg remain grounded to the floor. So you do not want to lean back, let the right knee lift off the floor and uh, sort of yank your left leg into the full lotus. All right, allow the hips to open, take your time, enjoy the journey and the process. 
Now you have to make the lotus pretty tight, so it's important that you draw the knees together as you draw the heels as high up onto your hip bones as you possibly can. Once you get into that position, then you can try to bind like I'm doing in the second window here, and you can hinge it forward. Otherwise, just find a position that works for you. Close your eyes. You can keep your index finger and your thumbs together, palms facing up like we did in the beginning. Working on the Gyana Mudra, the Mudra for Higher Consciousness. And you're really creating a, a wonderful circuit here where your prana, your life force, is able to circulate around your body, your mind, and your spirit in a very unobstructive way. So just allow your seat to sort of drop into the floor, but at the same time allow your spine to lift and lengthen and soar towards the sky. And allow your front body, your heart to stay open, your lungs to stay open. And feel yourself breathing fully in and fully out. Mind is calming down. And just meditate on that beautiful lotus that comes out of the mud, radiant, and that is you, radiant, beautiful. Place your hands to the heart, bend forward. Bow down into the highest place within you. Trust yourself, listen in, trust your intuition. Lift your chin. And then to come out of it, very gradually, work the left leg out first. Lean back this time and extend your right leg out. Extend both legs out, maybe flex your feet, contract the quads, massage your knees and your quads a bit. And then bend your knees, cross your ankles, lean forward, and go back into a downward facing dog to counterbalance all of that hip work. And of course, if full lotus doesn't work for you, just find the position where your legs uh, will be breathing, will be opening. So no pressure, just to find the right position for you in this moment. That's always the golden rule. And then slowly lower the knees to the floor. Sit back into hero pose, virasana. So your knees are together. Your feet are open, you can sit on your heels, you can sit on the block if that feels better for you, or you can separate your feet completely so you're sitting on the floor, whatever your knees can do. Uh, this is a great counter pose for uh, all of the half lotus work we've done. Hands to the heart and bow down again into the highest place within you. Inhale, sweep the arms to the side and up. And then exhale, draw the hands to the heart. You can complete it here. You can rest in Shavasana if you wish. Inhale, back up again. Exhale, draw the hands to the heart. Inhale. And exhale. beautiful. Namaste. I hope that that was helpful. Let me know. Bye.